Welcome to the Rare History Channel. 10 Things You Probably Didn't Know About Italian Gangster John Gotti John Joseph Gotti Jr. was a notorious American criminal who rose to prominence as the head of the Gambino crime family, a powerful organized crime syndicate based in New York City. He was born into poverty but, by leveraging his cunning and charisma, he quickly ascended the ranks of the Gambino family, becoming a prominent earner and protege of the underboss, Aniello Delacroce. His ruthless tactics, including the orchestrated assassination of the former Gambino boss Paul Castellano, earned him a reputation as a formidable and cunning adversary. In this video there are the 10 things that you probably didn't know about John Gotti. Fact number 1. He was one of the most powerful crime bosses in the United States. During the pinnacle of his criminal career, John Joseph Gotti Jr. was considered a dominant and menacing figure among American organized crime bosses. Despite the customary low profile adopted by his contemporaries, Gotti cultivated a public persona characterized by his flamboyant style and outspoken demeanor, which endeared him to some segments of society. Gotti gained notoriety as a charismatic and defiant criminal mastermind, dubbed Fee Demeanor Don for his predilection for luxurious attire and his confident demeanor in front of the press. Nevertheless, his invincibility was short-lived, as he earned the moniker the Teflon Don due to his apparent immunity from conviction in three high-profile trials during the 1980s. However, it was later exposed that these acquittals were the result of corrupt practices such as jury tampering, juror misconduct, and witness intimidation. Number 2. He was married to Victoria De Giorgio. In 1958, John Joseph Gotti Jr. was introduced to Victoria De Giorgio, who was of mixed Italian and Russian heritage, at a public establishment. The couple subsequently formalized their union through matrimony on March 6, 1962. According to Federal Bureau of Investigation records, De Giorgio had a prior marriage and had birthed a child from that union. Gotti and DiGiorgio had five offspring, Angela, Victoria, John Jr., Frank, and Peter. In an attempt to lead a legitimate life, Gotti sought employment as a fabric press operator in a coat factory and as an assistant truck driver in 1962. However, he was unable to abstain from criminal activities, leading to two incarcerations by 1966. Number 3. He was one of the Gambino crime family. John Gotti, an Italian-American mobster, was serving as an errant runner for Carmine Fatico, a capo regime in the Gambino crime family, then known as the Anastasia family, under the leadership of boss Albert Anastasia, a notorious Italian-American gangster and one of the modern American Mafia's founding members, as well as the co-founder and later the boss of the infamous Murder Incorporated organization. During this period, Gotti was involved in the hijacking of trucks at JFK International Airport, formerly known as Idlewild Airport in collaboration with his brother Gene and associate Ruggiero. During this time, Gotti formed a close relationship with Joseph Messino. Number 4. He was dubbed Crime Boss. Identified as both Castellan's likely murderer and his successor, Gotti rose to fame throughout 1986. At the time of his takeover, the Gambino family was regarded as the most powerful American mafia family, with an annual income of $500 million. In the book Underboss, which is a biographical book based on the life of Sammy the Bull Gravano, Gravano estimated that Gotti himself had an annual income of no less than $5 million during his years as the boss and more likely between $10 million and $12 million. To protect himself legally, Gotti banned members of the Gambino family from accepting plea bargains that acknowledged the existence of the organization. Number 5. Gotti was charged with assault acquittal. On the evening of January 23, 1989, Gotti was arrested outside the raid night and charged with ordering the 1986 assault of labor union official John O'Connor. In the back of the police car, Gotti remarked that he beat the charge 3-1. to O'Connor, a leader in the United Brotherhood of Carpenters and Joiners of America Local 608 was later convicted of racketeering himself, was believed to have ordered an attack on a Gambino-associated restaurant that had snubbed the Union and was subsequently shot and wounded by the Westies. After one night in prison, Gotti was released on $100,000 bail. Gotti had his occupation listed as a salesman for a plumbing contracting company. Number 6. Gotti portrayed in TV movies. 
Gotti has been portrayed in six TV movies, two documentary series, and three theatrical films and has been a subject of music. Getting Gotti 1994 CBC TV movie portrayed by Anthony John Dennison who is an American actor. Gotti 1996 Bach movie, portrayed by Armand Asante, an American actor. Witness to the Mob 1998 NBC miniseries portrayed by Tom Sizemore, an American actor and producer. Gotti is mentioned in the song Everybody Get Up, by British boy band 5, released in 1998. Gotti is the key subject of the song King of New York by New York rap rock group Fun Love and Criminals, released in 1996. The song reached number 28 in the UK singles chart and featured on the band's debut album Come Find Yourself, which achieved platinum status in the UK. Gotti was also featured in the Big Heist 2001 Canadian-American TV movie which aired on A&E, portrayed by Stephen Randazzo. Boss of Boss's 2001 TNT TV movie adapted from the book of the same name, portrayed by Sonny Marinelli. Number 7. Gotti Ordered the Murder of Gambino's Boss Gotti ordered and helped to orchestrate the murder of Gambino boss Paul Castellano, who had succeeded Carlo Gambino as head of the Gambino crime family. Castellano was murdered in the year 1985 December. John Gotti took over the family shortly thereafter, becoming boss of what was described as America's most powerful crime syndicate. Gott's downfall came in 1992 when his underboss Salvatore Sammy the Bull Gravano cooperated with the FBI. Gravano's cooperation brought down Gotti along with the top members of the Gambino family. Beginning in 2015, the family was headed by Frank Kelly until his assassination outside his Staten Island home on March 13, 2019. Number 8. Gotti was convicted in 1992. Gotti's underboss, Gravano aided the FBI in convicting Gotti. In 1991, Gravano agreed to turn state's evidence and testify against Gotti after hearing his boss make disparaging remarks about him on a wiretap that implicated them both in several murders. In 1992, Gotti was convicted of five murders, conspiracy to commit murder, racketeering, obstruction of justice, tax evasion, illegal gambling, extortion, and loan sharking. He received life in prison without parole and was transferred to United States Penitentiary, Marion. According to Anthony Gaspipe Casso, the former underboss of the Lucchese crime family said that what John Gotti did was the beginning of the end of Cosa Nostra, which is a highly organized crime group. Number 9. Gotti was involved in street gangs. Gotti was involved in street gangs associated with New York City mafiosi which is the American mafia commonly referred to in North America as the Italian-American mafia. It is a highly organized Italian-American criminal society and organized crime group. The organization is often referred to by its members as Cosa Nostra and by the American government as La Cosa Nostra. The organization's name is derived from the original Mafia or Cosa Nostra, the Sicilian Mafia with originally referred simply to Mafia groups from Sicily operating in the United States, as the organization initially emerged as an offshoot of the Sicilian Mafia formed by Italian immigrants in the United States. Number 10. He attempted to kill a fellow inmate. On July 18, 1996, a fellow inmate in prison named Walter Johnson punched Gotti in the prison recreation room leaving him bruised and bleeding because Gotti had disrespected him with a racial slur. Gotti, desiring revenge, offered Aryan Brotherhood chieftains David Sahakian and Michael McElhenney somewhere between USS $40,000 and $400,000 to have Johnson killed. In August, McElhenney told two Brotherhood underlings to kill Johnson if they found a chance to. According to a federal indictment charging him and 39 other gang members with murder, attempted murder, and racketeering. Johnson, however, was transferred to the Supermax prison in Florence, Colorado.